I'm going to be honest with you. This has been a very weird situation. Roman Reigns got suspended for the wellness policy violation, yet on Monday Night Raw, they did kind of a shoot about it. Seth Rollins came to the ring and said he wasn't supposed to talk about it, but then up on the Titantron comes the apology for Roman Reigns. Where was that information when Adam Rose had his side of the story? Why didn't they address that? Why is Roman Reigns getting that? Then comes the news today that Dave Meltzer is reporting, and you know what? A lot of people take Dave Meltzer's word out of characteristic, but this does make sense, that Roman Reigns was essentially forced to apologize because he he's essentially the guy. If WWE is pushing Roman Reigns to be the next top guy and he gets popped for a wellness policy violation. Now, I will say this. People have said, oh, he's gotten high. You cannot get suspended for weed. It's a, it's a $2,500 fine. Some guys in the past did, but that was because of the arrest, not because they got caught with uh, the weed in their system. Now, if Roman Reigns got popped for something, then there's been a lot of people throwing out some ideas from amphetamines to the juice, which I, I don't think it would be the juice. Um, but the bigger problem with this is essentially they were forced to, was forced to apologize to the locker room. Now, some people believe this has gone too far, and some people believe this was the right thing to do. If you are the next top guy and you're the one they're putting all the, the chips in, even if the crowd isn't right now getting behind him, and you have him going out there and getting popped for a wellness policy violation, kind of changing the game a little bit, they kind of had to change up the storylines, but they still let him compete the story. A lot of people were surprised they didn't suspend him right away. Well, WWE really has no obligation to. In the past, WWE has waited oftentimes six weeks. If you remember back in the, uh, the really early days before some of the guys went to WCW, I'm looking at you guys like uh, Kevin Nash. You get popped uh, when you're about to leave the company and you get suspended. Maybe it was it Kevin Nash. Guys, let me know in the comment section below. Was it Kevin Nash? Scott Hall? Do you know who I'm talking about? But essentially, Roman Reigns was forced to apologize. Now, the, the rumors or the, the story is that it was not necessarily Vince McMahon. It was coming from Triple H's side. It was uh, uh, Kamen that basically made the decision that he should apologize to everybody. Now, if this was true, or Carano, uh, Carano's side, um, if this is true and he was forced to apologize to everybody, I do think this is kind of a big deal. Now, I don't know if we're ever going to know what he was popped for, and I don't know if we ever necessarily should. This is Roman Reigns owning it. Adam Rose owned his. Now, granted, Adam Rose was a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit of a weirder situation because eventually the domestic incident, which has now been dropped completely, um... But Roman Reigns is is getting that national press about it, that he messed up and he, he's owning it. Um, other guys, for not necessarily wellness policy violations, also step up and own it, and WWE is, is like, no, we don't care. Is Roman Reigns getting that preferential treatment? It is because of the fact that they've invested so much into Roman that they're willing to accept it. Now, I will say this. If Roman Reigns did mess up and take something on the banned substance list, it could be anything from a supplement that's on the list. It could, I mean, it could literally be for anything. And I know some of the comments are probably going to be loaded with, he did this or this, the rumor he did this. The big Reddit post on uh, Squared Circle was that it was amphetamine mixed with uh, weed, which w once again, weed is not a suspendable offense unless you get like a possession charge or something like that. I will say this though. If Roman Reigns gets popped, the fact that he's owning it, come back better than ever, that's what he should do. I think that the fact that he is owning it is one of the big steps. In Adam Rose's case, he essentially, if he does, he has ADHD, ADD, and he needs the medication. WWE knew about it for a year. All of a sudden, they randomly get popped, and then everything else transpired. Now he's not with a company. He's Aldo Rose on the independent scene. But here you got Roman Reigns getting the same thing, and he's just, I own it, versus Adam Rose was owning it, but in a different way. I have this, this, and, and I don't look at it as, you just need help. If you have a situation in your life and you need help, whether it be um, mental capacity, whether it be mental help that you need, don't ever be ashamed of it. And the fact that Adam Rose was owning that and still gets suspended, well, it's like, well, I get why the wellness policy violation is there. And especially with um, Adderall and things like this, it's huge in the uh, video game scene, the esports scene. They actually had to come out and regulate it and ban it because there was a lot of players taking Adderall to focus and to be better. There was huge, you know, rumors about it unless you had a medical prescription for it. So there are instances where it does get abused. 
But Roman Reigns, in this situation, it does seem like he's getting that preferential treatment. But on the same aspect, if you have a guy that you've invested in so much time and effort to, whether you guys like Roman Reigns or you don't like Roman Reigns, a lot of people were surprised that it was brought up on TV. Now, it does look like they're going that shoot angle. They've tried every single thing in the world to get Roman Reigns over, except turn him heel. They've, they've tried taking it away from him, like Daniel Bryan. They tried recreating that story. They put on some epic matches. They tried the family angle. And nothing has gotten Roman Reigns over to this point. Well, if he does get suspended, he goes away. You know, Titus O'Neil recently got suspended, and everybody got behind him. Free Titus, free Titus, free Titus. Titus O'Neil comes back to the WWE, and then everybody's bitching the fact that he's in the U.S. title picture. Now, I know a lot of people in my comments when I bring up this argument, they're like, well, I wasn't one of the people that were cheering for Titus. I just thought it was stupid that grabbing Vince McMahon, he got suspended. But there was an overall huge push and campaign for it was trending, I think, for a day about bringing Titus back and how stupid the suspension was. And then he finally comes back, and I, I will say this. The brawl he had with Rusev on Monday Night Raw really set it apart. And then everybody saw the SmackDown spoilers and went, whoa, I thought they were pushing it, and what happened? It's a red herring. They're still doing Titus versus Rusev, but on SmackDown, they gave you a reason to kind of watch to see if anybody else could get a U.S. title opportunity. It was kind of smart, and I enjoyed it. But that's where things differ. That was a suspension for conduct. He said he was trying to let Stephanie McMahon go first. He thought ladies should go first, so he stopped Vince McMahon. It wasn't necessarily a rib. Ultimately, let him to be suspended. Titus O'Neil owned it. He admitted it. And then WWE, he was still doing his father stuff. Owned it, came back. And I think he's doing good. There's a lot of the vocal crowd that aren't a fan of it. Now, I wonder if WWE sees that and then realizes, is this a way to get Roman Reigns over? I hope this isn't a way for WWE to try to get Roman Reigns over. I hope this is Roman Reigns made a mistake. He's going to serve his time and he's going to come back. The reports are because Roman Reigns is headlining house shows. Basically, you get paid, your downside guarantees. Um, the fact that he's suspended for a month and he headlines his own shows. He headlines three or four tours a week and all those added up over the course of the month, 12 plus shows. He's, he's roughly going to lose probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000. So this is a huge mistake. He'll still get paid for the royalties on shirts and stuff, but he won't get that guaranteed money, the downside. So that's a big mess up. So to play around and say this is fully storyline, I don't believe this situation is a storyline in any way, shape, or form. But that doesn't mean WWE in the reality era can't turn that into a storyline. If you have a talent that you've invested so much into and certain things aren't working, and if that talent messes up, it's kind of like a redemption storyline. WWE is huge on these redemption storylines. Booker T, from prison to the ring. Booker T had made mistakes when he was younger. He owned them, ultimately became what he was today, a WWE Hall of Famer, the five-time, five-time, five-time WCW champion. He owned those mistakes. There are mistakes you can come back from. In the sport, uh, the juicing scandal is huge right now for the Olympics. The Russian team, track and field, got banned for it for doping. People often bring up doping in a way of it's bad, and it is. When you have comment, if you guys saw, and I don't know if anybody here watches this show, but uh, John Stewart had an analyst, John Oliver. John Oliver has his own TV show called Last, uh, Last Week Tonight, and he profiled uh, drugging, doping, using any kind of advantage to get over the competition in competitive sports. But see, WWE isn't a competitive sport. WWE is based on look. So guys are trying to get juice to possibly get back to what WWE liked in the past. Like Vince McMahon. He was big on those big, buff, muscular dudes. So people had a reason to kind of juice or take those, those um, substances, the anabolic steroids, everything, to kind of get juiced up so that way they could get over with the look. But a lot of this stuff is more about performance enhancing, on training, on being able to do more. So they take more of these substances. There is a lot of banned substances, a lot of products on over-the-counter stuff, or even stuff that you go pick up, because I take protein shakes now. I walk a lot more, I do yoga, and I take, before I go walking and I do my five miles, I take a protein shake. Uh, usually about two scoops or a scoop and a half, which is roughly 30 to 40, 50 uh, grams of protein. Now, when I take that, I know what's in there, but do I really know what's in there? There's a lot of substances that could be banned. 
if he's taking something to he's the face of the company there's talks about it being a fat burner that he was trying to lose some fat maybe trying to lose the part more uh, maybe he's trying to uh, get that summer body in shape so they can ultimately pull off of the vest none of this really matters what matters is what comes from it what matters from this whole situation is the fact that a lot of people are upset that they feel Roman Reigns is getting that treatment that he okay because he's the next top guy WWE is is doing something they normally wouldn't do if anybody else was popped would we see it on the big screen talking about it would we see major news outlets pick it up and would we see WWE superstars respond to it saying oh he's owning it it almost seems and I'm not making any accusations in this statement but Roman Reigns announces a statement that he uh, is fully owning it that he apologizes to his family his friends, and the fans. And then multiple WWE superstars, many of them, publicly tweet out, Roman Reigns is owning it, he's going to come back bigger and better than ever. No pun intended about if it was steroids. A lot of superstars are doing that. And WWE, in the past, has been very vocal in superstars, well, we want you to tweet about this, this, and this. And WWE does. If they had a backstage meeting where Roman Reigns apologized to everybody, though, maybe it wasn't forced. Maybe the talent just realized this is our guy. Now, in recent months, as reported by Meltzer, you had, um, and just looking at attendance figures, before, the boos about Roman Reigns didn't really matter. He was still pulling in bigger house show crowds than uh, the other shows. He was still doing well on merch. And then all of a sudden, the live show attendance started to drop, and that was rumored to be possibly the reason that Dean Ambrose was given the title. I think Dean Ambrose was giving the title because it's an epic fucking storyline that all the S.H.I.E.L.D. members have beat each other for the title, and it just creates this epic woven story. That's me personally. That's what I believe. But, Roman Reigns, when you come back from this, if this is a shoot, if this is going to turn into... I made a mistake. He overcomes it. If this is ultimately just another storyline to get Roman Reigns over, and it works, I'm fine with it. But he made a mistake. We all make mistakes. It's pretty easy for us to sit here and judge Roman Reigns. We are not in that competitive competitive atmosphere. We do not know what it's like to be the guy they are pushing to be the next guy. The guy. He's not a good guy. He's not a bad guy. He is the guy. And according to WWE, he is. Well, at least the dirt sheets, the rumors, the reports. And if he was trying to do whatever he could to be that guy, I don't know if I can fully fault him for that. If it was an honest, simple mistake, he's going to serve his time. What he did, would he have got popped or in trouble with the law? No. But it violated a company policy. And when you're the guy, you got to follow the policy because it sets the example for everybody. I hope other talent learn from this and, and really just kind of understand that when you're put into a position to mess up, this is very different. In the past, WWE has got these big pushes with Roman and Seth, and then injuries happen. And here, we have a suspension. I don't think this will be the end of Roman Reigns. I don't even think this is the worst thing that could have happened to Roman Reigns. I think it, it is smart to kind of get him away from the spotlight, especially with the amount of people that hate him. Whether it's going to work or whether it's not going to work. Let's not be quick to judge. And I'll just wait for five years or ten years down the line when we finally get that shoot interview on what he got popped for. I'm looking at you, Hornswoggle. Remember when everybody accused Hornswoggle of being something and then we found out it was just because he couldn't pee in a cup? Well, only time will tell. Roman Reigns, I look forward to you coming back. Hopefully some things change.